that star quality of La Loba, right? There's an intimidation factor to it. Uh, stardom has its privileges. Do we see Manuela Marconetto freeze under the big lights? That is the question. It's not about the numbers. Beatrice, get us started. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este es el evento coestelar de esta noche. We continue with much more action. This is the co-main event of the evening. División Peso Mosca, Flyweight Division. Los jueces son the judges are John Rupert, Dorian Mirasola y James Lázaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Introducing the blue corner, la esquina azul, wearing red and green, vestida de rojo y verde. Su peso oficial, 125.4 libras, her official weight, 125.4 pounds, with a pro record of four victories and four losses. Con un record profesional de cuatro victorias y cuatro derrotas. From Torino, Italy, Manuela de Bocher's daughter, Marco Neto. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing blue and white, vestida de azul y blanco. Su peso oficial, 125.4 libras, her official weight, 125.4 pounds. Con un record profesional de cuatro victorias y dos derrotas. With a pro record, four victories and two losses. De Tijuana, Baja California, via Mexico City. Lucero, la loba, a costa. El referee, Marcos Pérez de Panamá. Okay, you already know the rules. I want to clean fight, obey my command at all times. Okay, touch the glass if you want. Go to your corner. They look ready to go. I, I, was, I thought they weren't going to. Go. I really thought they weren't going to touch close, but they <laughs> did. Okay. Manuela, <laughs> Marconeto. In the green and red, taking on okay. La Loba. Ah, I thought she was trying to, oh, that's her footy, nice great chip kick. Yeah, and there's some of that grappling. La Loba is not a stranger to, she knows that all her foes go to that technique right from the start. But La Loba said, not today, homie. Yeah, that's right, La Loba, Lucera Acosta, representing Mexico. Know about her star power, but only four and two in MMA, just getting her career started. Used to be known mostly for her boxing. She's added the guillotine to her resume. A little bit of grappling there. Liking those low kicks from La Loba, you know, that really to throw off Marco Nero. Oh, and she's sure there timing. is. Loving it. Woo! Now starting to unload. Good right hand. Marco Nero might be out, guys. I think she might be. Turning to La Jaula. Look at that right hand from Lucero. She's coming in, connecting quite clearly, and is not. Boy. Yeah, she's uh, not backing off, no. to your point, Rodolfo. No. Alex, at this point, Marconetto, I mean, she needs to move around a bit. Yeah, she's definitely trying to stay composed. Interested to see if she's going to go try to clinch things up here because the Loba is unloaded on the feet. And that's an experience thing. You realize you're getting beat, you need a second. Looks like, however, Marconetto looking to fight fire with fire, staying the, in the face of La Loba. And look at the confidence in La Loba. Just, she just feels it, right? She knows where she started. She knows that she has this fight in her pocket. And La Loba is going in and out, in and out. It's Beautiful, the rhythm yeah. that Manuela hasn't been able to pinpoint quite yet. Oh, wait a oh, second. Right Speaking of. Was that a right hand? I, I couldn't. I yeah. missed it. Okay. Got right in with the right hand. You were talking right about timing. Yeah, she timed yeah. the right hand perfectly. And look at that guillotine. La Loba in guillotine position. Not a good way to good step counter. in now. Oh, okay. Another good right hand over the top. We got a fight, ladies Yes, and we gentlemen. do. And this is only the co main. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. Both these ladies came to fight. And Looks both like fighters. La Loba tr trying to clear the cobwebs a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, both yeah. of them earning each other's respect on the feet right now. Well, oh, that right hand from Marconetto. Beautiful Dynamite. Job. Rodolfo, when you and I were talking about this fight and the skills of Marconetto, we said she's got the build. She has the background. In fights she's lost, she doesn't throw enough. 
This time out, she's throwing punches. You know, if you look at her record, pretty much all her fights have gone the distance. I don't see this one going the oh. distance. Would be amazed as we're halfway through round number one. Both fighters have been hit by a ton of significant strikes. Yeah, now the pace of Aloba has gone down a bit. Now she's trying to do some flashiness. Some of that step and move. This is when the, down, the, the damage, Alex, starts kind of sinking in a little bit. You start getting a little tired, start feeling those punches. Yeah, Manuela's probably feeling it on her leg, too. Those first leg kicks from the Lobo were vicious. Very well timed. They seem to take the balance out Ooh. at exactly the right time. The, the thing with the Lobo is she'll get on this flurry of wild punches, and Marconetta's really reading it so well when to strike. That yeah, countered very well. Just and, and you can see the frustration of Lobo. You saw that. Cause I do it. <laughs> when you're oh, trying to, you get it. Right <laughs> and it right. seems as though Marco Nera seems see, sees oh. something in the attack of La Lobo with that right hand. She's starting to get the timing. Because when she throws those lobby-sided punches, that's what she's able to connect with that right hand, right smack in the middle. But Manuela seeming to keep her head on the center line. The Lobo able to, to touch there. And neither fighter using a whole lot of head movement. Especially when on the attack. Yeah, there's no movement here whatsoever, Jim. The straight shot. Woo. Couple of good right hands from La Loba. The question is, and look, Loba has great cardio. She she could carry on with this pace throughout the fight. Maybe the advantage in her back pocket if he draws this round number one draws to a close. 40 seconds left. Yeah, I, I see that happen because I do it myself, but you, when you touch your gloves out of frustrations, but you almost give it away to your opponent that you're showing it that you're frustrated. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tell. Yeah. Marconetta trying to close aggressively, 20 seconds left in a very close first round. One last knockdown might Ooh. seal this, and La Loba is oh. going for a big right hand. And she's showing that she has a lot of fight left in her. Yeah. Another big right. That That's the end of game. round number one. There's a whole oh. lot of howling left in the Loba, guys. Wow. The boss, Campbell McLaren, walking by yeah. us. <laughs> full of emotion. <laughs> Let's take a look here. The Loba coming in fierce right from the start with that like kick it. to the <laughs> taking her down. And she wasn't wasting any time right from the start, Alex. It was just nonstop, but Mark Renetta was ready to feed the time, and it's hitting in. And when the Loma gets hit, she seems to hit with a little bit All right, work at the legs. Don't worry about the legs. Don't worry about the kicks. Jab and 32. Jab, jab, and throw the hand, work on that side. And a 32 is, is, you know, code for whatever combination that they have on their team, just the FYI to people out there listening. Every team has the code, yep. every team has the language. Whatever 32 is, we're going to see it in round number two. <laughs> Could be 32. <laughs> Company. Here we go, round number two. The fighter from Italy, Manuela Marconetto in the green and red La Loba, Lucero Acosta, in the blue and white. And hey, Mark Bernetto, uh previously was at their great uh, top, take Great Britain top team with Brad Pickett. Right uh, now, she's getting tattooed and backing up. With the, oh, another good right hand from La Loba. La Loba Ouch. is headhunted to the body. And it's over! Another TKO! La Loba in round number two. Phenomenal work from La Mexicana. Who can stop that girl, man? Got dropped in round number one, but never took her foot off the gas after that, full of confidence. Marco Marconetto gave it everything she could, but La Loba victorious again in La Jaula. Wow. A gutty performance she had to dig deep for that one but knockout power once again
And it was nonstop. When she felt that her prey was in trouble, she just kept going. Here you go, you see it. She'll find her again with that right hand, keeps it coming, switches to the body a little bit, and finishes it off to the head. It's like watching an F1 car just nonstop with the hands. Uh, Beautiful. No intelligent defense here. Not. It, 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 she was really hurt on the feet right here with the right hand. Yeah. But once she curled up, it was that lack of intelligent defense, right? Not a lot of these getting through, but nowhere to move, not offering anything back. Good job by the referee on that stoppage. Wow. Lucero Acosta, another fantastic victory. We'll make it official when we come back. It has been the site of so much action, La Jaula. El tiempo oficial, 32 segundos del round número 2, the official time, 32 seconds of round number 2. And the winner, by technical knockout, la ganadora, por knockout técnico, desde México, Lucero La Loba Acosta. La Loba moves to 5 and 2. Marufo, five years older than Sanchez. Sanchez, uh, just an inch in height. Looks a lot more from here, but just an inch in height. Exact same reach. The difference is in the experience, not in the numbers. Omar Amador, get us started. Damas y caballeros, y ahora vamos a continuar con mucha más acción. We're going to continue with much more action. Y estamos listos para este combate pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división Peso Mosca. Everything is set for this bout. Set the three rounds of five minutes in the flyweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are John Rupert, Mark Streisand, y Richard Green Sr. Damas y caballeros, el momento ha llegado para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, now introducing out of the blue corner. Entra con un récord invicto de dos victorias. She steps in with an undefeated record of two victories. Peso 124.8 libras. She weighed in at a lean and mean 124.8 pounds. Vistiendo todo de negro, wearing all black. Es de Puerto Vallarta, México. Fernanda Lapid Marujo. Su oponente en la esquina roja. Now her opponent out of the red corner. Entra con un record profesional de cuatro victorias y una derrota. She steps in with a professional record of four victories, one loss. She registered 125 pounds flat. Registró un peso oficial de 125 libras planas. Vistiendo todo de rojo, wearing all black. Es del Dorado, California, Maritza. Sánchez. Y el referee para este encuentro, el internacional Raúl Porrata. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Si todo es en todo momento. Toquen guantes, touch gloves, back to your corner. It is a showdown in the 125 pound division. Maritza Sanchez in the red, Fernanda Marufo in the black. One thing stood out, Jimmy, in that introduction. Marufo never looked at the eyes of Sanchez. Always looking down. Some part of Jose Aldo, known yeah. for that as well. Oscar De La Hoya didn't like to make eye contact. None whatsoever. Yeah. But Sanchez walked out very confident. Chest up, <laughs> forward looking. She's taking the center of La Jaula. Oh. Good exchange there from not being faced. But see, this is where it gets dirty. Yeah. has no problem with an exchange. She does it, but Sanchez is so technical for that striking. Also versatile with her strikes. She goes to the body, she uses her right. elbows, she uses every weapon when going for the finish. And all floors of the body, she'll work it. Top, bottom, body. Oh, nice, oh, nice short elbow. elbow. Ooh, great stuff. Oh, that's it. Wrist this, around her back. this may she just finish early, Jimmy. That uh, might be it. 
Well, the coach saying she can't defend. You have a wrist trapped. Satch is so powerful. Trying to, yeah, trying to free that right hand. Rafar getting overwhelmed. Just over a minute into round number one. Now Satch is taking the fight. Seems like he's trying to take it to the ground. Wow, good job by Marufo popping back to her feet. Oh, oh another nice. beautiful that elbow. elbow. That one cracked her. I've lost count, Jimmy. And it's only been two minutes and change. That's a versatility of the offense of Maritza Sanchez. She's so good with that. Now going to the knees. I mean, there's just no rest. Now, if you see the fight from Marufo that she last had and took a victory, this is where she took the, the win. Right here in the clinch where she landed the elbows, but she needs to transition here and get the upper hand in her hand. And Marufo just not able to yeah. free that right arm. You see, it's trapped and then That's can't right, yeah. defend the left. And Finally there she out. goes. But great Ooh, Tim, trip right back where it started for yeah, Sanchez. Into the body lock position, but at least Marufo not dealing with that wrist control. Marufo has been training for about 11 years. Considers herself a striker. Right now, she's getting overwhelmed by Maritza Sanchez. Sanchez is here all day. Well, Marufo threatening in some shots there, Jimmy, but Marufo needs to keep the hand to the body shot. the body again. Those left hands to the body and to the head. Marufo hanging on for dear life. She will break you down. Good way of positioning the head. There's a weapon yeah. under the chin. Outside trip. Okay. Beautiful stuff. Stanley, if, they, if, I, if I'm Vegas, I'll win. A, 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 <laughs> I'll bet on that sub win today. I, I, that's what I will be betting on. Right now, a half guard position. And that's what Rufo's trying to hold, but Maritza Sanchez on top. You got to go to February 2020. She won by way of rear naked choke to none other than Lucero La Loba Acosta. Yeah. Half butterfly guard now from Marufo. Trying to hang on. She's been on the receiving end so far in this fight. Yeah, Marufo is just puzzled here. Just can't quite to seem to get out of this position. Just Sanchez. Certainly hasn't gotten any offense of her own. And she wants to Take, oh, that did a flying knee. They just couldn't fight the right timing. The pop back to her feet, but oh, Marufo kick. circling at the edge of La Jaula. You're not going to find a door out of here, Marufo. Yeah. She needs to come back and yeah. get into this fight. Marufo needs to get that jab to keep her away, to keep her at bay. Sanchez, though, once again, bringing the physical pressure. If you don't give your opponent a reason to back up, they never will. Always come forward at you. That's why. It's like my Rufo's hands are just non-existent. No. Sanchez, once again, working the body lock. On our way to, and I think, an educated 10-8 round. Don't see him that often, but so far, this has been a wipeout for Maritza Sanchez. <laughs> Sanchez all day. You said not a lot of people wanting to sign the contract to, find Maritza, to fight Maritza Sanchez. We're seeing why tonight. Yeah, she said it. Look, I've been in a long training camp. I, I, I was scheduled to fight earlier this year, and no one stepped up. Well, so far, Fernanda Marufo stepping up, but on the receiving end of the offense in round number one. Okay. 
Welcome back to Combate Global. Fernanda Marufo versus Maritza Sanchez. Sanchez in the red, Marufo in the black, and it has been one-way traffic in round number one. Fernanda Marufo better find a way to get back in this fighter. It's gonna be a short night. So Jimmy, in between rounds, Marufo's corner was telling her, use the one-two, the one-two and move. One-two and move. You have the perfect weapon to do it. But we're not seeing that right now. And the one thing is she spent her entire time back, oh, back slip to the there. fence. This slip could be critical. Because Sanchez is going to eat that alive. Yeah, she's on top. Haven't seen much from Marufo's guard so far. And right before she slipped, she threw in like a loopy hand. And this is just where pretty much that first round, right? Sanchez left off. Yeah, physical pressure on top, round and pound. Yep, 110-8 in there. That's what I agree with. Judge number two had a 10-8, but it doesn't matter. All three judges have it for Maritza Sanchez. Perfect 10. Wipe out in round number one, and now Maritza Sanchez on top early in round number two, exactly where she wants to be. Look how she positions oh, that left arm to land in the nasty shots. The versatility of the offense, punches, elbows, body, head, work, and everything. Everything's a target. Good coaches tell you, work the head to the toes. Yeah. And referee looking really close yeah. at a stoppage here. Oh, Peraka might have to step in, and he does. there it is. I don't think there was any one big shot that led to it. It's just no that intelligent yeah. defense. You saw the way the fight this was, which way this fight was going. There was no way that she was just going to bounce back from that flurry of punches. Just Sanchez could tell that just she just had this wrapped up. Pressure on from start to finish. Maritza Sanchez with the TKO win. We'll make it official when we come back. Welcome back. It was a wipeout for Maritza Sanchez over a game. Fernanda Maruto. Let's get the details from Omar Amador. A un minuto 36 segundos del segundo asalto, el referee Raúl Porrata pone un alto a este encuentro después de una seguidilla, seguidilla de golpes sin respuesta. At a minute 36 of the second round, the referee Raúl Porrata stops the fight after a series of strikes without contest. Para la ganadora, por knockout técnico, for the winner, by TKO, del Dorado, California, Maritza Sánchez. Face doesn't always tell the tale. I think it does in this one. I think it does. I mean, yeah. unfaced. Oh, you know your jujitsu, my friend. A two inches height advantage for Anna Summers. That is it. The story of this fight is not about the numbers, it's about what's in between the ears. Both these ladies very mentally strong. Omar, let's get them started. Ahora continuamos con mucha más acción con este compromiso pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división de peso átomo. Now we are ready to continue with much more action with this bout set to three rounds of five minutes in the atom weight division. Los jueces son Eliseo Rodríguez, Vicente Rodríguez y Richard Green Jr. Y ahora sí, damas y caballeros, the time is here para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, now introducing out of the blue corner, entra con un récord profesional de dos victorias. She steps in with an undefeated record of two victories. Registró 105.4 libras en la báscula. She weighed in at 105.4 pounds. Vistiendo todo de rojo, wearing all red. Es de Santiago de Chile, Melissa Gómez. Y 
ahora presentando a su oponente en la esquina roja. Now introducing her opponent out of the red corner. Entra con un récord profesional de una victoria y una derrota. She steps in with a professional record of one victory, one loss. Weighed in at 105.4 pounds. Registró un peso oficial de 105.4 libras. Vistiendo de azul y los colores de la bandera americana de Crestwood, Illinois. Anna, the Honey Badger, Summers. Y el referee para este encuentro, el Boricua, Ramón Ramos. Acá, mira. Take yourself to the whole time. Una pregunta, you have a question? No questions? Shake hands right Spanish. now. Okay, Spanish. Tiene pregunta? Oh. Okay, I'm going to be talking both English and Spanish. Me respeto, okay? Shake hands. Respeto. Adra. We are ready to get underway. Round number one, Melissa Gomez from Santiago, Chile in the red. Anna Summers from Chicago, Illinois in the blue. Frank, Frank Mir once said, he said, I don't go to get the tap. I go to break it. You tap on the way, you don't go to the hospital. <laughs> Great advice for anyone doing jujitsu in MMA. Summers, more than Ready. willing to do that. Keep that in mind. The bell rings for round number one. And shout out to Orlando Galinda who suffered that injury because right after, on her hospital bed, she said, I want that rematch. <laughs> that is guts, my that, friend. That's and, a lot of heart, man. <laughs> and that is what the ladies bring. And La Howla, and they're coming out swinging, Juliana. These girls are scrappy. Nice leg kick by both of these girls. This is really nice. Oh. And Gomez is coming in a lot of aggression. I don't think they know that defense is a thing. I don't think they know that defense. You know, you can move your head. You can keep your hands up. Nope. These ladies just know how to throw. Oh, the careers are still in diapers. They'll get there. <laughs> Gomez has a lot of power in those shots. Summers, if you hit her, she's gonna strike right back hard. But she's gonna stick perhaps to that bread and butter, that jiu-jitsu. Listen, they eat, sleep, fighting. Summers, her partner, they both started uh, an MMA gym, but that's where they train. So this is something they do 24 seven, guys. And Gomez is so aggressive, and she knows that Summers wants to take her down, and she ain't having any part of it. And when you look at Gomez's tapes, you look at all of her fights, it's this funky, rangy style where she leans into a lot of her punches. It's really hard to see her offense coming because she, she disguises it well with her movement. It's hard to time. Those unorthodox strikers yeah. are my favorite. Chuck Liddell, Igor Vovchanchin, Fedor Emelianenko. You don't quite see where the punches are coming from until it's too late. But if, they, if you catch him, guys, it's all timber. And you can tell that in the beginning of those exchanges, Gomez landed and Summers does not like it. Like, was not expecting Ooh, it. Oh, oh. slipped there, guys. She tripped, uh, slipped on the mat. Yeah, push kick, got a little bit caught up there. Nicely done by Gomez, still attacking the entire time, saying, I'm not letting you up, I love it. She wants to caught her to the ground, but Gomez is not having any of that. This is exactly where Summers wants the fight, too. She wants to invite her down there and say, come on, come come play with me down here. But Gomez is like, nah, I'll just <laughs> kick you a bunch and, you know, stay aggressive on my feet because at this point, you know, who looks like they're winning the fight? I would definitely say go. Oh, nice up kick. This is looking shades of Sakuraba for the old school fans. In pride, he would kick your legs right off of you from this position. And Summers is thinking about this now because she's having a hard oh. time. Tried to kick her way back to her feet, landed to the body, but we call it the safe get up in jujitsu and MMA. She has to get up without exposing her head. Yeah, it's not easy to do. Is. She got it. There it is. Right into a double leg. Nicely done, and she's looking for the takedown, and she gets it. Nicely done by Anna Summers. She needs to keep staying on it. Oh. Gomez not having it, however. Back to the center they go. Nicely done by Anna Summers to get back to her feet. I don't know about you guys, my heart is racing. It has been nonstop. Can they keep up this pace? Yes, they that can. That is the question. <laughs> yes, they can. Both these ladies known for their conditioning, known for their aggression, but it's like they're looking across the, you know, La Jaula at, at, at a mirror image of themselves. I don't know if they're used to facing someone as aggressive as they are early in the fight. Absolutely, and these uh, Adam weights, they can go like this all day long. 105 pounds, that's what I love about Combate Americas, or excuse me, Combate Global. They, uh, they have the ability to get all of the smaller girls. You don't see a lot yeah. of the smaller weight classes in the other organization. Oh, trading leg kicks. Oh, and it's a hard leg kick that once again takes Summers off her feet. 
Gomez, a big fan of Rose Namajunas. You see her in her style. And you can see Summers is still trying to be aggressive on there, still trying to do it, but ooh. Oh, great I, welcome it to Combate Global. I don't know if I agree with that stand-up. She was throwing those leg it kicks. Still aggressive. Jimmy, mucho <laughs> más acción. It doesn't matter. I feel, not, I feel very attacked right now. Gomez I know you you guys. Summers down to the here. ground. And look at the damage that Gomez has done to the legs of Summers for being at the ground. You gotta take that into consideration. You know how much of an impact that'll do when she gets back on her feet, if she gets it, right? Yeah, and that no, left leg is welted up. <laughs> once again, trying to up, once again, a stand up. And Gomez is throwing a lot of kicks. There it is. There it is. So here it comes now. Here's Summer's chance to get the fight where she wants it. In the clinch, body lock takedown. Gomez is so savvy. She knows that Summer wants to take her down, and she is not having it. I love that takedown defense by Gomez. You could tell that she practiced this over and over and over again. She knew what she was going up against here. Now. Still that awkward movement of Melissa Gomez. 2-0 and in her career. Facing Summers, who is one and one. Both these ladies just getting started. It's a nice head kick attempt by Summers. Almost landed on Summers. Hard to time that in and out. Big movements from Gomez. Good right hand to punctuate Great round stuff, number guys. one. Great stuff. Wow. The energy both of these fighters brought. Like I said, it's so rare that, that, that an aggressive fighter sees someone just as aggressive as they are across the cage from them. There's no holding back, JP, in this one. Yeah, mire, ella lo único quiere abrazarte, ella no quiere pelear contigo. Tú la vas a esperar ahora, no quiero que te And you were saying, Jimmy, that she's got a little bit of an unorthodox style, but it's the ones that you don't see that land that hurt you. And Gomez is doing a great job of implementing her game plan, not playing into the jujitsu or, or the, the clinch game that Summers is trying to implement. And she's doing a great job sticking to her style of fighting. It. I love to see it. She's all over Summers. For Summers, she just has to find that gap to see if she can bring down Gomez. Is bringing after that jiu-jitsu game, which feels very confident. I gotta ask my broadcast partners here, do you think Gomez can keep this pace up rounds two and three? Is that not a huge question? That's a huge question. I, both of them, right? They both released a lot of energy in those five minutes. I say yes, because uh, women can do anything, and you know, especially at this light uh, weight class, 105 <laughs> atom weight. You know, there is a little bit of a surprise that we have later, uh, the super atom weight division that we're going to be adding in, and uh, we can't wait for that. We've got the Claire Lopez fighting over there in Japan for that Risen title July 30th. And, uh, you know, we're going to be cross-promoting there with Risen, but uh, that 108 class is, is going to be a, a big instrument here in the women's divisions because some of these girls, they, they can't make it, but they can make uh, 108. And, and we're, we're fighting over that three pound discrepancy. Are they gonna be fighting at 108? Are they gonna be fighting at 113? Uh, all that matters though, is that we have all of the lighter weight divisions in, in Combate Global, and, and whoa, what a head kick from Summers. And here is a scorecard from round number one. No surprise, Melissa Gomez, 10-9 across the board. And also to start round number two, kind of kind of answering our question here is Melissa Gomez still moving, still angling, sh still showing a lot of energy. I thought you said, can Melissa Gomez keep up that pace? And I think she, she can. is. Yeah, no, she is. She yeah. is. Summers has to find a way inside, find a way around the kicks and the punches of Gomez. Caught off balance twice, taken off her feet in round number one. Own kicks of her own, but. Nicely done by Gomez. <laughs> caught by Gomez. Keep her Great balance, balance from Summers. Wow. Man, he's just going. Gomez is scrappy. I love it. And you know what? She's from Chile. And I got some training partners from Chile. I got uh, Carolina Gallardo, who fights for yep. uh, Combate Global. I got Nacho Bajamondes, who uh, has fought for Combate Global uh, in the past, who's now fighting in the UFC. Chileans know how to fight on their feet, for sure. That's the first thing. Let's get that straight. And they are really good on the feet. Try to attempt that spinning back elbow, but the last time we saw Gomez was back in August of last year. In fact, she made her debut back in May. Both of them went the distance, picking up a unanimous decision, a split decision in her latest. Keep so, your hands locked, Anna Summers. Keep them locked and pull her off the fence. Get this takedown because you need it. Stamina is there, guys. Pull her off the fence, Anna. Good balance so far for Melissa Gomez. Nicely 
thrown by Anna Summers being able to stay in this clinch. This is where she wants the fight, and this is where she needs the fight to take place. She cannot let those hands go. And she realizes that boxing with Gomez is not a good idea. Trying to flip the script and good body lock, but no takedown. Take her off the fence. Got Got it. Nicely done. Oh, now this is where Anna can really capitalize and win this fight. Right into side control. Nice shoulder pressure by Anna Summers, too. Look at that. She's right making her throat area gurgle. There, yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Gomez is so scrappy. And it, but this is going to take a lot out of Gomez in this position. Absolutely. You can tell that this is where Anna wanted the fight to take place the entire time. And, and, and kudos to her for being patient and sticking with her game plan and finally getting this takedown. If I'm Anna, I ain't letting her up for the rest of the round. Right now, north-south position. Good job moving back and forth from side control to north-south, but now back in guard. She's quick and just laying in that body. As soon as she sees an opening, Gomez moves. She's right, right there to catch her. But you get that feeling, as you said, Juliana, in this weight class, like, if she gets an inch, she's gonna hop back to her feet. They're so light, they're so quick. It's not like working heavyweight, light heavyweight, like, you give any space at all, your opponent is up and gone. Yes, and that's that's a really big thing, though, too, is, is do they know how to get up properly? And, and Anna is going to do everything that she can to keep her down here. Nice elbow over the top for Anna Summers. Now it's time to get dirty, and it's time to go to work if you're Anna, because you don't want the referee to stop it. Also, Rodolfo can be so frustrating if you're used to angling and pushing the pace, and you find yourself suddenly on your butt when it looked like all the momentum was going your way. Mentally, it can be hard to get over. This, this is a big, big deficit here for Gomez. Being on the ground is going to take a lot of win from her, but Summers capitalizing and landing in those shots, those hammer fists. Don't we saw an elbow up. later on. Don't let her up, Anna. Look at that. Leg right there available for Gomez. Nicely done by Gomez. She was almost back to her feet, but Anna's like a dog on a bone, and she's staying on her. She's yes. not letting this one go. Summers she's not allowing right this back. to get back to the yeah. feet. Gomez is doing a good job of keeping her away. Nicely right done. There. Yeah, she's just... Beautiful job. Anna. Just letting everyone at home know that I'm keeping a good distance from my broadcast partner, Juliana Pena, who has her fist clenched and is ready to throw some strikes. So I'm staying over here, more on the right, Rodolfo. When she starts clinching the left, just stay further away. I'm no. away, man. Stay safe, buddy. No, 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 no. I don't fight for free. Looking to get up, a, looking to throw up an arm bar. Uh, Melissa Gomez is doing a nice job of staying offensive off of her back. She needs to get back to her feet, though, if she wants to continue to win this fight. Well, Summers looked to flip the script. She did it in round number two. We'll know in a little bit if it was enough. Remember, we have open scoring. Did she win it back in that round number two with that ground game? She was confident. She gave herself a nod. She knows that she picked up this round in her pocket. I'm so happy for her because she was able to turn it around. You know, she was able to, to stay composed and, and realize, hey, this is where I'm going to win this fight. And, uh, you know, she, she stuck to it. She's not going to defend it. And that's what makes you fight. When you get the body You know better than anyone else. Like, you're down, you got to find that, that, that grit, that willingness to the team. You find that right opportunity. It's about That's what makes you as a mature fighter. She's going to make a mistake. It's all about perseverance and that body lock. Make a mistake. Once she misses, make her pay and then go for the shot. Right around the guard, landed this inside control, right where she wanted to be, staying in that dominant position. Seeing where both fighters will be successful. Gomez in the red from Santiago, Chile, has been successful on the feet. Her opponent, Anna Summers from Chicago, Illinois, in the blue, has had success on the ground. Where will it go in round number three? We're about to find out. This is all system goes, guys. No, that's cool. I had just gotten back. I was not cool. That angle, that movement there from Gomez is there, so the stamina, there's no question about it. Now we're wondering if she could still do it in round number three. She is. Big movements left and right. You know, you made a good point, Jimmy. In uh, the beginning of round two, you had asked, can Gomez keep up this pace? And I said she could, and she did a good job up until the point that she got in the clinch, and I was like, oh no, maybe she is tired. <laughs> and that's when Anna was able to capitalize and get that takedown. So let's see if Anna can do it again. And also, we've been seeing it all night, Juliana, that you know, a Muay Thai fighter can do Muay Thai forever. Make them wrestle, they're out of, of, of gas in a couple minutes. The same thing, if you, if you get someone out of their comfort zone, they get much more fatigued, and Summers has to do that to slow Gomez down. Much more fatigued, and it's very tiring going backwards. So uh, when you can be able to take them out of their comfort zone and make a move back, 
that's, that, that gas is a person. And it is 19-19 all tied up. Oh, all three judges' scorecards have it one round apiece. I happen to agree with that. Yeah. I think it's very, very fair. But this round and this fight are up for grabs. For all the marbles. Oh, Anna trying to get into that clinch, but Gomez knows it. Nice leg kick by Melissa. Little exchange there. Nice body kick by Anna Summers, but uh, Gomez is waiting for her to do it so that she can plow with her right hand. Quickness there and catching it. One of the difficulties, if you have a grappling style, is you have to find a way to get inside. Running forward looking for a body lock isn't going to work in a striker like Gomez. Use your hands to set up your takedowns. Use your hands to set up your takedowns. Matt Hughes back in the day, that was his specialty, was fake the doubling, hit you with the overhand right, right, right when you were thinking takedown. Hope you're listening, Matt Hughes. It's your good friend, JP, and we miss you. We remember you well. Absolutely. Greatest welterweights of all time. Gomez, 50 punches to Summers, 23. Kicks are exactly equal. But Gomez, just a punching machine. You know what I love about Gomez is that she knows that Anna wants to take her down, so she punches and then she's out of there. She goes and she finds a new spot. I love that because it's hard to track somebody down who's constantly moving, going side to side. It, it's nicely done and it's a great strategy by Gomez. And Rodolfo, you haven't gotten the sense that any one punch has really hurt Summers. It's just the volume. Her face is now bright red. It wasn't any one shot. It's at Gomez keeping the pressure on. It's that consistency and the movement is, is there, guys. And that just frustrates because you just can't catch her. Just a leg kick by Gomez. Anna, use your use your hands to set up your takedowns. Now right pulling there. forward, throwing straight punches, levels. and Gomez, to your point, Juliana, out every single time. Yes, she's doing a great job of that. She's always finding a new spot. She's never staying stationary. She knows Summers wants to take her down, and she's out of there. She's so good at her reading her opponent exactly her strategy. And Summers hasn't really committed to any level changes, meaning no single leg, no double leg. It's been body lock over and over. That's just a Liga uh, hair tie. Uh -huh. I thought it was a mouthpiece. That's what I thought too. <laughs> you guys can discuss hair ties. I, I'm bald. I have no idea. I'm not I'm that assuming. far, Jamie. I'm not that far. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Juliana Pena's word for it as Gomez continues to throw punches and cut angles on a very game Summers, who just can't seem to find a way inside. Anna Summers doing everything she can, but can't seem to corner Gomez enough to take her down. Look, it, Gomez is so smart, right? She she spent the majority of that round two on her back, and she was like, uh-uh, I don't like it down here, and I'm not going to let it happen again. And she's not. Round three, she is making sure of it, that she is not going to be in any dangerous position to be getting taken down. It's that quickness, that footwork. What do they say? Stalk, don't chase. And it looks right now like Anna's kind of, Anna oh, Summers is kind of yeah. chasing Gomez around La Jaula, not able to cut off uh, La Jaula and make it a little bit smaller on her. Not able to do that. No, and she's uh, behind the gun here. 40 seconds left in the third and final. She's got to do something. Nice right hand by Anna Summers. That was nice. No, left hook there sneaks in by Anna Summers. That was great. Sorry, we're Yeah, no, Summers just seems just, just, just swerving out there. Has her just puzzled. Under 30 seconds to go, round number three. Melissa Gomez, Anna Good Summers, way. they've left it all in La Jaula so far. But Gomez, if she can keep it up, will have a decision victory. Ooh. Can Summers turn it around with 15 seconds left? And what I like, JP, is as soon as Melissa feels that she's going to get grabbed by Summers, quickly moves right out. I like love Like Houdini. It. She's always finding a new spot. That's what I call it. Go find a new spot. She's doing a great job at it. Excellent power, excellent combinations, excellent fight IQ from Melissa Gomez. The question is, was it enough in the eyes of the judges as they give each other their respect? It was hard fought, but Melissa Gomez saw round number three go her way. Is it enough? That's the question. We'll answer it on the other side of this break. Well, we knew it was tied going into round number three. Who left it all in the howla in the last five minutes? That's the question for the answer. Here is Omar Amador. Después de tres asaltos de mucha más acción after three rounds of much more action. Todos los jueces están de acuerdo. All the judges are in agreement. 
con tarjetas 29 a 28, with scorecards 29 28. Para la ganadora, por decisión unánime, for the winner, by unanimous decision, Melissa Gomez! Hard fought win for Melissa Gomez. But I gotta tell you, Rodolfo, I wanna see them both fight again. This was a great performance by both fighters. We take a look at the head to head. Najera, 10 years younger than her opponent. One inch height advantage, three inch reach advantage, both weighed in about the same, close to 120 pounds. Ready to get it started. A karate expert making her pro debut. How will she adjust? Let's find out. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. A un peso pactado de 120 libras. We continue with much more action this bout. At a cash weight of 120 pounds, los jueces son the judges are Richard Green Jr., James Lazaro, and Jonathan Lane. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing white, vestida de blanco, Su peso oficial, 118.6 libras, her official weight, 118.6 pounds. Esta noche, entra la jaula a hacer su debut profesional tonight. She enters la jaula to make her professional debut. De Santiago de Chile, Katherine Machuca. In the red corner, la esquina roja, wearing red and green, vestida de rojo y, y verde. Su peso oficial, 119.8 libras, her official weight, 119.8 pounds, con un record profesional de una victoria y una derrota, with a pro record of one victory and one defeat. De sangre mexicana, México, Jasmine Niña Arbona Jera. El referee. Ramón Ramos. I need that off. Okay. I got it. I got it. Come here. I got it. I got it. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Que Dios la bendiga. Had to take her headband off. Had it on in honor of Mexican Independence Day. Catherine Machuca in the blue and white taking on Yasmin Najera in the red and green. We are underway. That just adds more pressure to Yasmin and Jimmy. <laughs> You're fighting on your independence day of your country. Look at that striking, man. She's very fast, on point. And again, going to the bone breakers just really improves your skills a whole lot more all around as a fighter. Now, Catherine from Chile, that background in karate, that stand-up game, you know, what's gonna be effective is those leg kicks to set up the punches and set up the next move that you want. But, and you can see it in her fighting style. Just look at her guard. Yeah. You know, it's not your typical type of uh, style that you see in MMA. Yeah, on one like, thing about uh, karate fighters, so good at controlling range, so yeah, good yeah, at yeah, using yeah. the kicks. Yeah. Especially those front kicks, good right hand in. Those punches, by Machuca. Those punches, though, they gotta come in with a little turn, though. You know, they, they it's not it's not full extension there. And you're right about controlling that range, but she is leaving that chin wide open, Jimmy. Good timing, and uh, Jasmine could have a sweet victory on uh, Mexican Independence Day, but he came in with that shot. Nice jab. Yeah, taking commitment off the right hand, Machuca really pushing. On that power side, not a lot of jab, not a lot of setup. She's leading with the right hand. Yeah, good way of Machuca working that range. Leaving that gap in between, not allowing uh, Yasmin to. Najera, only her third professional fight. She's looking very relaxed in there. Very, very calm, fluid cool. with her movements, taking the center of La Jaula. Yeah, last time uh, she, we saw her compete. Consistent, striking, effective. And that was, uh, for the most part, very, very impressive against Valentina. Uh, ironically, another, against another Chilean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Another Chilean fighter, of course. And right now, she said she had faith in her boxing, but so far this has been at outside range. Yeah, so at what point do you pull the trigger and take a chance and go to the ground, Jimmy? That that's becomes the million dollar question. Machuca on the Ooh. left in the blue and white, purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Najera on the, on the right in the red and green, blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I love how Najera just set up that kick, set up the striking. No attempt at a takedown from either None. lady yet, and they've been None. content to kickbox with MMA gloves on. Oh, look at Najera now trying to play the game. Nice. Switching card. Good job kicking the leg out of Machuca. Najera now thinking about, should I take the opportunity to get on top? And she doesn't take Ooh. it. Surprising to you? She let her off the ground. Hey, if it works, stick to it, Jimmy. And she has a lot of confidence in the striking. Hasn't really been able to close the distance, hasn't been able to get in, in what we would call traditional boxing range yet. Right. And Machuca, she feels the pressure. She feels. She sees it. She's throwing them off. And Machuca in and out, very good. She didn't yeah. stay in boxing range, able she to push it. out. Th that's what's very impressive, that range. She, she uses it very well. Doesn't allow Najera to really fully extend in a flurry of punches. I was there in Los Angeles, California. Ryan Bader taking on Leo to Machida. Yep. And what happened was Machida kept him outside, kept him outside, kept him outside. Finally, yeah. Ryan Bader tried to get in and bang, caught him halfway in. Similar kind of thing here where Machuca doing a good job at controlling range, getting in and then getting out again, just like that. It's very frustrating fighting someone like that. Very, and if you notice that left hand of Machuca, she'll kind of like swat it away to put down that arm and come in with that right. That parry and shot. Yep. Right. And, uh, yeah, she's trying to be a little creative now, Jared, now with the kicks. But look at this fight, Rodolfo. If, if you ask me who's the beginner, who's making their pro debut, you never know. I, I wouldn't know. Machuca, just so much maturity and, you know, being a bit older but having competed internationally in karate, I, she, that, that, that stage fright isn't going to affect her like it would an inexperienced fighter. She's not that. None whatsoever. She just feels very confident. And it, it shows you, right, that it's your pro debut, that experience that you had in the AMI levels or in karate or whatever combat sports that Does you have. Help. It, just, it helps you out. Yeah, she's winging that right hand. Najera in the center of La Jaula. I mean, that might affect the judging. She has consistently been the one in the middle putting pressure on Machuca, although Machuca has countered well with 10 seconds left. She once again letting the right hand go. Najera trying to get in that boxing range. We finish round number one. Welcome back to Combate Global. We're ready to begin round number two. It is Catherine Machuca in the white and blue taking on Yasmin Najera in the green and red. Machuca making her pro MMA debut, but a lifetime of experience in Shotokan Karate. Yasmin Najera, one and one as a pro. Can't tell by the way she holds her hands. She believes in her boxing, but she's been on the outside eating a lot of those in and out right hands. Uh, the thing I could oh. She's been trying to bank in that right hand, Jimmy, but the, the only thing that I've noticed is when she comes into that brawling right with Machuca, Najera will come in with her head down. An uppercut will put this away. She has to be very conscious of that. As far as Machuca, she's playing the range real well, but you gotta keep your hands up. You know, she, 
she's been caught many times in the chin by Najera. Now that tall karate stance from the Shotokan expert. Now on your right, Catherine Machuca. Yeah, she's like a, she's like that difficult jigsaw puzzle you can't put together for Najera. Yeah, I can't quite figure it out. You know, Najera, you know, just starting her MMA career. It's right. only her third MMA fight. She hasn't seen a lot of styles. Certainly hasn't seen a karate fighter yet. So she is trying to figure out this puzzle, even though it is Machuca's MMA debut. You know, it's, it's a little different. And we have open scoring here. Najera winning round number one in all three judges' scorecards. Thought it was a close round. I find it surprising that no judge gave it to Machuca. I thought she landed some good right hands. You see how she leads in. She, she's the point that she put all her weight on her. She, she let the arm go, put the weight there. Don't want to do that. And body lock now from Najera. Will we see the first takedown of this fight? Machuca knocked down, you know, Leg kicked out from her, wasn't knocked down, but leg kicked out from under her in round number one. Najera chose not to go to the ground, thought it was a surprising choice. Yeah, for Najera, if they were to get back right here in the center of La Jaula. Machuca has been giving that lead leg all day. And there's the uh, take the ground down game. right into half guard. This is where it could get very interesting, Jimmy, to see who has what and on the, the ground. The fighter from Mexico City. Now on top, Mexican Independence Day means a lot to everybody in the EFE right now. Hope everybody's celebrating, having yeah. a good time. But right now, no good times had in La Jaula. Very tough fight. Very tough, but good way of Machuca there. Putting that leg from Adelon and Jarrett again to mount. Machuca, purple belt in jiu-jitsu, trying to get her guard back. And that could be very exhausting, that position from Machuca making her pro debut on their ground. Good extension with oh, the legs, excellent go. job. From Machuca, able to get space. Not gonna guard back, but get her opponent off of her, but now she has two minutes. Kinda win back this round. Yeah, those, see, the, those those leg kicks on, on the lead leg of Machuca needs to work on it. You can see a little reddish coming up. Keep working on that and break her down. And Najera wants a sweet victory. She's cornered here tonight by Ana Palacios, one of the big stars here in Combate. Yeah, I saw them working out. Yeah. And the Howler earlier, getting some advice, moving around. She did a lot of footwork. She did a lot of work against the fence as well. Neda now starting to push forward a little bit. And also, yeah. although Machuca has been winging that right hand, she's right. landed a few times. I wouldn't say she's ever had Neda hurt. It could be the ball no. in the head is going, look, I can eat this right hand to come forward. You know, you start realizing when a fighter can make that um, gamble and feel they can win. Machuca, though, definitely the pace here has come down a lot on her end. She was moving like crazy in round number one, a lot less and in the, round and, number and two. The, and the mouth is open, Jimmy. You know what that means. Yeah, welcome to the world of nerves. <laughs> it takes at least a third of your energy away from you in your pro debut. You now I tell fighters all the time for their pro debut, I said, how are you feeling? You know how you feel right now? A third of that's going to be gone. Yeah. The, the energy you feel right now, a third yeah. of it's gone from nerves. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Machuca picked up the fact that Najera's working on that lead leg. For Najera, keep working on that. It's working. It's, it's very red if you can see it. I mean, see a little wobbly coming out of her. Yeah, so definitely inside, bright red. There oh, it is. Through the leg kick, ate a right hand in response. But Machuca so far not able to combo off that right hand. I mean, fainting here will come in very handy for Najera, especially with those kicks. Remember, the judges gave round number one to Najera. 10-9, all three judges' scorecards. Oh, oh spinning kick. Didn't see that coming. Good right hand against Ooh. the fence. And they're ending round number two slugging here at Combate Global. Yeah. 
¿sale? Confía, sí. escúchame. En el piso lo estabas haciendo bien. Si te quieres ir al piso, tienes con qué. ¿Sale? Respira. Venga, tú puedes. Último round. Vamos bien, Jazz. Concéntrate. Welcome back. Happy Mexican Independence Day. And the fighter from Mexico City is feeling it. Yasmin Najera bouncing off her stool. Her opponent, Catherine Machuca, in the blue and white. In between rounds, Jimmy, Ana Palacios giving some advice to Najera. As I said, you know, keep working that lead leg, keep kicking it. But once, once you kick in there, make sure you land in those shots. Open it up, set it up for yourself. Yeah, it certainly feels like Najera has the confidence right now. Maybe an awkward round number one. Remember, we have open scoring, so you know where you are in the fight. You know how well you did. So even an awkward first round, she won it, all three judges scorecards. So you start going, okay, well, I can open up my offense a little bit. It looks like that's what she's doing. That's exactly what Ana Palacios told her. Like, hey, let loose. And if, they, if you, she wants to go to the ground, go ahead, give it to her. You got enough confidence in yourself. Good shot there to the bottom midsection. Shilka, the Ooh. karate expert, has landed some good punches. Yeah, hasn't here. been able to hurt Najera, hasn't really also been able to really throw very many combinations off those punches. They've been singles. That's the thing with Andrew Gilbert scoring, Jimmy, rightfully so. No surprise nope. there. Najera winning a close round number one. I thought round two was much more hers. She got the takedown, was on top, landed some good strikes. Ooh. Once again, the right hand of Machuca, but Machuca's got to sell out and throw everything. She needs a stoppage in this round number three. One way of winning for Najera. If she wants to get to that elite level, if she wants to climb that mountain, she has to let go. Stop being conservative. You know, she's been very conservative in that first, second round. This is your opportunity to show. Because you see a lot of movement, and that's great, that's fancy, but that's not enough. You got to throw. You got to give me something. Are you surprised, Rudolfo, we haven't seen any head kicks, any spinning attacks, any of the, the, the karate techniques other than the straight right hand, which is pretty rare. We haven't seen the head kicks. It might turn this fight around. From Machuca? Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think it was a Jared. She attempted one, a la uh, yeah, David she, Martinez. She's but that's about couple, it. Yeah, she's yeah. the only one. But Machuca, yeah, no crazy wild karate kicks or tackling. Oh, there's, there's the spinning, spinning back, back fist. Okay. There we go. That's spinning a little something. Fist. We heard. Okay. Guess she got the memo. But that would be kind of the game changer, right? You know, a head kick and a knockout. We haven't even seen her even attempt those. You know, sometimes you gotta, it's the, uh, the gift of surprise. And when you, when you throw those things at your opponent for two rounds and change, you haven't hit him with, and you hit him with this, he's gonna throw him off. Well, we're round number three in a, round, in a fight that has been controlled by Yasmin Najera, the young lady on your right from Mexico City. The boxer believes in her accommodations, believes in her power, her opponent, Catherine Machuca, making her pro MMA debut. And as I thought, she's accounted well for herself in her pro debut. She has been in this fight, but since a close round number one, she's been a bit outworked, I would say, in the center of La Jaula. Very much so, and, and you're absolutely right. Just no kick attempts here from Machuca. I would have seen a lot more, considering with that background. Oh, okay, she had a little shot there. Yeah, good, good right hand, she's right. but she's been throwing that since the beginning. Good single right hand, not but, comboing off of that. But yeah. she, right, doesn't follow up. Yeah. Once you hit, she moves back. There, okay from Najera. Yeah, Najera one's the one that's been risking a little bit more. But let minute, them hands go. Yeah, minute 30. Go. Left in round number three. Mm -hmm. You get a little flat footed there. Yeah, throwing those kind of rapid punches. Not a lot behind any of them. And if you read Machuca, I mean, she's, look at her shoulders. She's telling you where she's going with those shoulders. You could read her. And also very, very fatigued, moving a lot in round number one. But she committed a cardinal sin in combat sports, which is never set a pace you can't keep. Don't move a lot in round one and none in round number two. A lot of moving around number one. It's been considerably less every round since. Thinking maybe guillotine without hips. That ain't gonna happen. She does not have full guard no, in there. No, 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 no. Half guard now. No 
Naruto kids on the way up. No guard, no guillotine. Let it go. <laughs> if your kids aren't activated, it ain't going to work. You're going to waste your energy for nothing. All right? But it's, it's almost like a natural instinct, you know, yeah. when you go there to put that on, go for the guillotine choke. You can do it standing, but once it's a guard position, you need that closed guard to activate the hips. And right now, 10 seconds left in round number three. And a oh, strong oh. finish by Yasmin Najera. Mexican Independence Day. She wore the colors proudly tonight. But I got to tell you, Catherine Machuca in her professional debut, she went out there and fought. She brought her heart. She brought her best. Go back a little bit to the lab, work a little bit, but won't be surprised if we'll see her back again. Uh, we saw improvements to be made by both fighters. We will make it official right after this stay with Combate Global. Welcome back to Combate Global. It was a hard-fought pro debut. It looks like it went the way of the veteran. Let's make it official with Beatrice Callas. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. All three judges turning identical scorecards of 29 to 28. Los tres jueces entregan tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. All in favor of the winner, by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador, por decisión unánime. Desde México, Jasmine Niña Nahera. Jasmine Nahera. Thrilled, now moving to two and one as a pro. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for this fight of, yeah, Clash of Ladies. Set to three rounds of five minutes at a catch weight of 105 pounds. Los jueces son, the judges are Mark Streisand, James Lazaro, y Ricardo Celis. Estamos listos, el momento ha llegado para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, now introducing out of the blue corner. Entra con un record invicto de cuatro victorias sin derrotas. She steps in with an undefeated record of four victories, never seen the loss. Vistiendo todo de rojo, wearing all red. She registers 105.4 pounds. Registró un peso oficial de 105.4 libras. Es de Monterrey, Nuevo León, México, Daniela Tiny Mensa Hernandez. Y ahora su oponente en la esquina roja. Now her opponent out of the red corner. Entra con un récord de cuatro victorias, cuatro derrotas. She steps in with a record of four victories and four losses. Vistiendo todo de negro, wearing all black. Registró 105.8 libras en la báscula. She step, steps in at 105.8 pounds. Es de Reading, Pennsylvania. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Kyla K-Rock Rancho. Y el referee para este combate, el puertorriqueño Ramón Ramos. That's right, the ladies underway. Kayla Rocco versus Daniela Hernandez. Daniela Hernandez in the, looks like the orange. And it is Kayla Rocco in the black. And we are underway. Johnny Eblen in the corner, of course, of Kayla Rocco. So is the pit bull, Thiago Alves. Both fighters. Oh! oh already, jab Vicky. right to the chin! Whoa, I didn't even feel it. That's how fast Rocco is, and now she's going to the ground game, and we've seen some of that groundwork that she has. You talked about earlier, okay, boxing. Has she applied some of that other tools? We're seeing it here tonight, Jimmy, already. Hasn't even been a minute yet into and the fight. Daniela Hernandez going right to her instincts, going for the wrestling. 
She represented Mexico in the Pan American Wrestling Championships. Recently retired from wrestling, but she spent years on the mat. You see right there, going for the leg immediately under duress. It's natural instinct to go for the legs. She is trying to clear the cobwebs as Kayla Rocco trying to isolate the left arm of Daniela Hernandez. Almost inverted. But then we go into the wrestling, but what about the jiu-jitsu? You know, what does she know? What can she bring to the table? And how good are her escapes from her, right. from here as Kayla Rocco working hard on that arm. She's not letting go of that arm, Jimmy. Kayla Rocco wants to finish off this fight very early on. Also, if the, if the, if the angle of the hip switches, a yeah. lot of triangle danger here. About a million things that can go wrong right now for Many, Daniela yeah. Hernandez. Yes. And we're <laughs> right not there, even two minutes yeah. in, right? She has those legs tight, Jimmy. Yeah, she maybe seems up the triangle here, but looks like yeah. Hernandez finally getting some space. There she got her out. head is out. Now this is when the wrestling comes into play, Jimmy. She's able to take her down. Maybe get some ground and pound work there. Some knee. There are the knees. And the clinch just now in guillotine the position. Guillotine, yeah. Going hard for it. But look at Kayla. They're trying to wrap that leg around, not allowing her to push up the hip. Kayla Rocco now looking for space, arm in guillotine. Daniela Hernandez putting her hips hard into this finish. Yeah, but I don't think she has that deep yet. Look at just the neck there, a little bit out. No guard right now, no. not really able to activate her hips when it comes to this guillotine. But how the momentum swings back and forth in this sport. But Rocco dropped her with a jab in the opening seconds. The damage can be done here, Jimmy, with those knees. The uh, escape from Rocco. Now we got a fight. I'm back to the center where the decorated amateur boxers ready to ply her trade. Daniela Hernandez has already felt the power. Dropped by a, a simple jab. One of the themes last week. A little bit of a theme so far this week, once again, is round number one doesn't mean you're going to lose the fight. It's like a, a comeback, comeback story, tonight, yeah. right? <laughs> Combate Global, Combate Global has become a home of the comeback. <laughs> and it's always great to see, and just in sports in general, right? When you have someone, a team, an individual losing, and then you come back. It ain't over till it's over. And when I was studying Kayla Rocco for this, for this fight, as I was sitting there watching her tape, and, and, and the first word that occurred to me is picky. She's picky with her shots. She's not a volume She doesn't striker. waste it, no. She doesn't no. waste it. No. Stays behind the jab, can throw an, an, an excellent right hand. She doesn't throw it if she doesn't think it's going to land. And crisp. Yeah. Not a volume striker. She throws very, very straight, very, very tight. Great combination again. Surprising, going for a takedown of her own. Now, I'm sure if I'm, if I'm K-Rock, she had a split decision victory. She had a split decision defeat in La Haula. I want to get away from the splits. Now, exactly. Right. I want to win this in, in nice fashion. Yeah, you don't want a, you know the finish or a dominant performance, right? Judges make their night easy. Because yes, a win is a win, but that split in there, you know, it's like ah. And the idea that you could have done just a little bit more right. is what keeps you awake at night as a competitor. Right now, Kayla Rocco keeping the pressure on Daniela Hernandez. Daniela, a standout wrestler. Once again, represented Mexico in the Pan American Games. Oh, nice shots over the top. Another classic USA versus Mexico clash inside La Hala. Oh, oh, another good left. What I'm this liking here, chin. what I'm liking from K-Rock, Jimmy, is in that position there that she was really pressuring Hernandez to La Hala, and that's going to kill a wrestler. Nice sharp punches. Daniela Hernandez winging those shots a bit. Well, she said she's been doing boxing herself. Right. A lot of her, her punches a lot wider than those of Kayla Rocco. And we're ending round number one. Great round so far for the boxer from ATT. And then the overhand right, Jimmy, as we predicted that she was going to throw. When you have that taller fighter going up against a shorter uh, fighter, you're going to see that overhand right very much so. It's but, like you don't have a choice but to throw the wider punches. You're not, the straight punches well, aren't going to land. Yes, but your opponent's taller than the kicks, straight punches. But yes. you have the kicks, yes, right? For sure. And and that's one thing that, that, that you just have to adapt to the kicks. And you could you could always chop down a tall tree with the, with the legs. Let's see what we can see. There it is. 
Right, that was the opening minute of the first round. And I'm just seeing right into the corner. I'll try and translate as much as I can here. There's a lot of head movement. So that's when that boxing comes into play. Because she's she told me she was working a lot of the boxing, but we're looking at the highlights here from that first round. There's a little bit of a grappling there, almost an opportunity for K-Rock to get a submission, but the fight ended up going right back to the feet again. You see Tiago Alves, Johnny Eblen, two stands out, standouts from American Top Team in the corner of Kayla Rocco. And gotta like the way their fighter fought in round number one. And there's nothing to take away from K-Rock. She did what she had to do. She looked very good in there. Start of round number two. Kayla Rocco in the black trunks and black top versus Daniela Hernandez in the red. And listen, Hernandez has a lot of pressure. We haven't really touched on the fact that she's undefeated. Yeah. She's going in there with a 4-0 and record, and, and, and she's going up against a more experienced fighter with 4-4. Four and four. Look at the response to the kick. It's going to be punches from Kayla Rocco. Great feints there from Kayla Rocco. Hands very, very high, no defensive collapses, but she shows she's not afraid to throw those kicks. Not whatsoever, but I haven't seen much of the wrestling from her hand. No. I guess she's she's very confident about all this boxing, but haven't seen from that as well. Well, round number one, we have open scoring. No surprise, Kayla Rocco, 10-9, all three judges' scorecards. Remember, her corners are aware of that. They can tell the fighter. They're aware of it before we are in the broadcast booth. Ooh. And Daniela Hernandez just hasn't seemed to have, have found a way around those straight punches. Like the path to the takedown is blocked by that fist. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of feinting and switch, and it's yeah, about timing. Direction. It's a lot of uh, timing. It's about time. There it is. That's what they wanted. Deep single yep. leg and got That's it done, but Rocco not staying on her butt. Yes. Excellent job getting that leg back. Well, that's the type of training you get at ATT, Jimmy. They can do it all over there in Coconut Creek. I'll Again, tell you a good example, me. Amanda Nunes. Yes. Right yes. before before she got into ATT, those takedown defense, you, you couldn't take her down. Excellent job. Reaching. Robbie Lawler. Yep, Sam, oh, reaching guy. back. Oh, Looking for the head. The problem is you can give up your back in that position. Kind of modified crucifix position yeah. here. Very dangerous right now for Daniela Hernandez. What we call a Grammy roll in wrestling. It works to put somebody on their back, but it can be dangerous here. Very right here. Yep. Yep. If Rocco can pop can her head that. out, yep. she'll have the back. Never and she's got it. it. Now she may have the, almost there to get the mount. Almost there in full mount. Left leg still in that little bit of that half guard position. Daniela Hernandez threatening with that guillotine. Not going to work Great. there from half guard. Great yep. way to transition to, to the side, but Hernandez still holding on. Not much there to do for Hernandez. Yeah, a little rookie position. mistake going yep. back into half guard. She right. had side control. And you hear her corner saying elbows now. Go to those short weapons. Don't have a lot of space. Very chest to chest. That's where elbows, short punches, so important. Not a lot of power, but enough to really throw you off and Look at the face of Daniela Hernandez having to deal with the physical pressure of a bigger fighter on top of you. And we're seeing it yeah. right here. Rodolfo, you know well as I do, that just wears you out, having that physical pressure. Exhausting. Ugh. And, and you just, it's like, how the heck do I get out of this yeah. thing? You know what I mean? What do you do? You explode and maybe leave, right. leave something behind it. No good, no good options from there. But even with the explosion, it's about timing. Yeah. When that person gets off to transition to the side, you have to find the right the right opportunity. Daniela Hernandez using Z guard now rolling for a knee bar. Trying to go through if she can get the ankle. Good job from Rocco triangling her own leg. That's great defense from there. Someone's after your leg, put weight on it. That's, That's the it. easiest defense. That's all it is. Now big mistake there from Hernandez. She gave her back. Short hammer fist, but not gonna do a ton of damage from here. Rocco so far on top. Judges, whoever's on top is usually winning. Nice short shots. Good shot there from Rocco. Oh, Another nice. One. Beautiful right yeah. hand. That one may have stunned Hernandez. That was a good one. Rocco's just looking like a stud in there right now, Jimmy. You know, leaps and bounds above her yeah. last fight, right? Yeah. Really. Yeah. She, look at that. She, just look at that right yeah. there. Yeah. That right there. Look at that. Uh, she, she waits for her to get up. 
Can I throw in a Sakuraba reference? Kicking sure. The leg? Can I yeah. Do that? yeah, yeah. Sakuraba-esque <laughs> in pride. Going for the leg. Google it if you don't know what we're talking yeah. about. If you're too young to understand it, look at it. Oh, and there's that left. Good shot from Daniela Hernandez, but a lot to a lot of ground to make up in this fight. So far, good stuff from Kayla K Rock Rocco. Not just good strikes, but good angling after she punches. You know what I like about K-Rock is that she is she brings that boxing stance, but she makes it work in MMA. Yeah. Right? And, and that's kind of hard to do. Yeah, she still has that 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 very boxing type style of stance. Yeah, but good angling, good right. footwork as we end round number two. Another great round for Kayla Rocco. She's definitely looking like a hundred bucks in there. Very, very good. More, uh, hey, using yeah, jab to get a little close. Sometimes double up on that jab, right? Whenever she's up, double up. There it is. We're taking like some of the highlights from that second round. Hernandez attempted to go for that single leg, but great takedown great defense from K Rock. She like talked about it, Jimmy. About that evolution as a fighter we're seeing it here. Make her box with you. Developing in all skills, and she is taking on a seasoned pro wrestler here tonight in Salahala. But it's been K Rock, that she's been the story here tonight with that striking, cutting the corners, making it nearly impossible for the tiny mechs to not, go down to the ground. And not breathing heavy as we start round number three. Gas tank looks good for both of these ladies. But it is Daniela Hernandez on your right in the red that needs to flip the script. She is behind. Kayla Rocco will have the scorecards in a second. Remember, open scoring here at Combate Global as we begin round number three. And it has been all Kayla Rocco. Amateur boxer, decorated in the boxing ring, made the transition to MMA with the help of Dean Thomas of American Top Teams. So far, she has looked fantastic. She looks superb in there, like a seasoned pro. Daniela Hernandez, in her previous fight, she's been able to use those wide punches to kind of get inside but the you body can't do, lock. But you can't do that against a, 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 a K-Rock. She's going to get you. Exactly. Because she's so technical. What She'll let you do it, yeah. and then she find that spot. Uh, the, the way she's been able to close distance in past Ooh. fights, not working now. And there's the open scoring. No surprise, two rounds to, two rounds to none for Kayla Rocco. And what 2018, I, all three judges' scorecards. What I like about Rocco, Jimmy, is how she plays the distance. She leaves that distance in between, not allow her to go in for the wrestling, for the takedown. What do they say? You're tall, fight tall. You're right. Long, fight long. She is fighting long and tall, despite just being five foot three. Against someone who's four foot nine, you've got the right. height advantage. Use it. Now, as a shorter fighter, in order for you to go in, you have to take a hit or two to get. I mean, you just have to. There's no way out of it. Now, we were discussing before this fight happened, you want to be a pressure fighter, you got to have the chin of a pressure fighter. You have to be willing to take the risks of a pressure fighter. And so far, they haven't worked out. Oh. And also, so far, a very composed fight from Kayla Rocco, right? She hasn't sold out for the big shot. She hasn't said, oh, I'm going to get the knockout right now and leaned in anything. It's been tight. It's been accurate and straight. There she went. Great body shot to her. Hernandez is just not, she's just not bringing it right now. Uh, hasn't found the way in. The path has not been open. It's been blocked with straight punches. And the numbers, although they favor Rocco, they haven't told the tale. Rocco has landed the much more effective strikes. We're still ahead in the count. 60 punches to 49 from Hernandez. 24 kicks to only six for Hernandez. Takedown, only one for Hernandez. It's been a non-factor so far in this fight. And those kicks for Rocco, they're not for knockout purposes. It's more for setups to set you up to come in with the shots, with the striking. And range finders keeping her opponent at the right distance. Cannot lose focus halfway through round number three. This has been, the last couple weeks have been all about the comeback, and Rocco doesn't want to let that happen. Hernandez trying to do the collar and elbow lock up, but Rocco wasn't having anything of it. This is not rust. Oh, good way though, positioning Hernandez's head, because oh, nah. those hands were it up. Now Rocco starting to feel it, finger toward the ceiling. I don't know, she's two minutes away from going over 500 
in her MMA career. Close to giving Daniela Hernandez her first loss in MMA. Yeah, see, Hernandez is trying. She's trying to pressure, but as soon as she walks in, she's got, she meets a jab. Stay behind the stick and the rest of the fight works out. Sound advice in any combat sport, MMA included. So that's why here you have to go maybe pick an, an ankle. You know, it, it, it work the ankles and pick the ankles, go lower. So far it's been Rocco with the superior footwork. Yep. Now you're starting to get into desperation territory, approaching a minute left, round number three. Yeah, right now, just... We know from the open scoring that it's, it's finish or bust for Daniela Hernandez. Tiny oh. Max has been on the wrong side of a lot of those punches. Again, that tie of just Rocco's is so effective with elbows and little short shots. Yeah, right now, it's just a desperate moment. You saw how she put up her shoulder there? Yep. And she backed up. Now we're seeing Kayla Rocco press the action just a little bit. 45 seconds Ooh. left to go in round number three. That's just body language, Jimmy. Your body yep. telling me I don't want any of that. With 30 seconds left, the question is, will Kayla Rocco let her hands fly, try to get the finisher, be content to go to the judges? She knows she has this one sewn up. You know she wants the finish. How hard is she willing to get it as oh. Hernandez trying to land big shots under She's 20 going seconds? For it, Jimmy. She She's is going for it. Not backing up in a fight Ooh. that she has in the bag. There we Ten go. Ten seconds left. Rocco feeling it. Global. Oh. She's feeling it. You're in the howl up, throw everything you got, and she is doing that. Oh. Beautiful <laughs> fight from Kayla Rocco. Daniela Hernandez giving it everything to the final bell. Now this was the night of the boxer. Wow. Kayla Rocco, hands in the air, beautiful performance. Welcome back to Combate Global. It was an incredible performance from Kayla Rocco, but did she get the win? We find out right now. Después de tres asaltos de mucha más acción, after three rounds of much more action, los jueces están todos de acuerdo. The judges are all in agreement. Para la ganadora por decisión unánime, for the winner by unanimous decision, Kyla Rocco! No surprise there. Kayla Rocco giving Daniela Hernandez her first loss as a professional. Couldn't have looked a whole lot better.